Welcome viewers to Nepali Times Weekly Chat. Uh, today's guest is George Verghese, who is the Nepal representative of uh, Asia Foundation. And today we're going to center on a piece that um, Bishal Chalise and George wrote in this week's Nepali Times, uh, an opinion piece on local elections on the 14th of May. And George, you called it No Turning Back, why Nepal's upcoming local elections matter more than ever. Why does it matter? Well, I think that uh, in Nepal's modern political history, this is the one time that political marginalization could be formally addressed through an institutionalized process. Um, and for the last 20, 25 years, we've not had the chance to have local uh, elected representatives have so much power and authority and financial resources at the local level. Mm. So although in the last two uh, constitutions uh, we were trying to empower local communities, uh, this particular constitution at least gives uh, a massive amount of control over resources, which as you know is uh, the real way decentralization works. Uh, it's not enough to give political authority, you must give financial resources. Which is why in the 1990s when we had local elections, although there was decentralization, yeah. self-governance, yeah. It wasn't really working well, right? Yeah. And I mean, in addition to that, obviously, we had, uh, it was a stillborn experiment because within three, four yeah. years of the first people's movement, mm. the insurgency started, also mm. owing to national level right. political uh, dissent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but are we expecting too much from this? I mean, we're, we're painting this out to be a panacea, right? But it's the same political parties at the center who have made a mess of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's there to say that these guys at the local level are going to behave any better? I think there's certainly a danger of thinking of this as a panacea. We certainly don't think of it that way. We think that it's the essential first step uh, in the long road back mm -hmm. to a normal a democratic political process. In that sense, I think it would take several rounds of elections. Yeah. It took us decades to get where we are, mm -hmm. and it'll take us decades to go back. Yeah. Uh, I fear that, uh, meanwhile, if national politics doesn't settle in a way that enables local politics, then we could continue in this mm. state for a long time. Yeah, there seem to be lots of ifs and buts, and the biggest among them, of course, being the Federal Alliance and the mm -hmm. Tarai based parties saying that no way we're going to allow this. Mm -hmm. They've announced a series of protests for next month. Um, How is it going to happen, and is it going to happen? Think? Well, I, I want to be optimistic about this. I really think that uh, if it weren't to occur in May, uh, at least the uh, political future of one major party leader is at stake. Prachanda was the current prime minister. And I think for him, it's not only an issue of being the architect of this historic moment, but also uh, continue to lead his mm -hmm. party. Uh, and in that sense, I think there is an urgency. I feel uh, on the Madeshi issue, I think there is a very, there is a very just cause. Mm. However, uh, I pointed out the other day that even if they got one third of mm. the uh, seats available through these elections, the amount of resources they would control to that would yeah. place them in a position of strength mm. from which to negotiate. And in that sense, they would change the rules of the game. And I really mm. would like them to participate yeah. in a new uh, political game yeah. that really goes well with what the constitution also permits. But from your talks with them, what what comes through? I mean, there is almost like uh, that we're not going to be satisfied with anything. Well, I mean, even in my article last week, I'd mentioned that part of this reflects an anxiety with the process, mm -hmm. but also a, a lack of uh, facilitated spaces to discuss in a collegial, a peaceful way mm -hmm. what uh, differences exist. And in many ways, what you're seeing uh, in terms of anxiety is uh, historic discrimination being expressed first yeah. and not enough patience to listen then to what comes after the venting. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, I think uh, we are re sorely lacking in terms of facilitators who at this time could unite the two groups mm -hmm. and talk about the way forward. But is there still time to do that because, you know, we're running out of time for the local elections at least? Well, I think there's always time for a, a peaceful engagement. And I really don't think that local elections themselves will solve the problems that mm -hmm. Nepal faces. Mm -hmm. I think that among these three required uh, political events, mm -hmm. the local, provincial and national elections, I think there's plenty of room. Yeah. to uh, continue the process. In the end, Madeshi leaders or Hill leaders, they're all national leaders as well. Mm -hmm. And so graduating their local interests to a level of public policy concern at the national level mm -hmm. would require peaceful engagement. Yeah. 
In your piece, you've uh, characterized uh, Nepal's local politics in the last 20 years as being a governance disaster. Mm -hmm. And in many ways it was. But we also have made a lot of progress. And in fact, despite the fact that we didn't have local elected yeah. leaders, yeah. we've made these tremendous strides in yeah. public health, education, yeah. uh, female literacy, things yeah. like that. So you think we'd be much further ahead if we had, had local elections? Or was it maybe not so much of a failure? Well, I, the way I characterize that is uh, I should probably have said a failure in formal governance uh, mm. rather than informal. I mean, Nepal is one of the few countries that's been characterized by very successful informal governance arrangements. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, I myself have studied community forestry and irrigation yeah. systems, yeah. and we have looked at how over centuries mm -hmm. Nepalese outside Kathmandu have managed to govern yeah. themselves yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in interesting ways. But what I was referring to was the experiment that we embarked on after the 1990s, mm -hmm. where we thought that we could enable local communities to take on more than just forests and more than irrigation mm -hmm. systems. So in that sense, I think it broke down because trust broke down during the insurgency. You had brother fighting brother, sister mm. fighting brother, mm. and so on and so forth. And during that time, I think it was difficult to build on the sort of successes of these movements that we mentioned. Uh, however, I mean, I think that uh, also the uh, collusion between the political elites to enable rent-seeking mm. from top to bottom has mm. turned Nepal into what I've characterized mm. as a rentier state, mm. where every state mechanism is oriented toward extracting rent from mm. whichever source is possible, exactly. including, I must say, foreign aid. Yeah. So the failure actually was not at the local level, because at no. least there we could fall back on informal systems. Yes. But at the national level, yeah. you have this political yeah. cartel yeah. running it with rent-seeking, yeah. as you yeah. said. In, in political science and economics, we call that coping behavior. And mm. at the local level, we coped very well, mm. because that was always the case. But at the national level, we weren't able to cope because we had nothing to fall back on. Yeah. So we're approaching the second anniversary of the earthquake. Yes. There's a lot of criticism about delayed aid. Uh, how much of that delay and uh, is, is due to the lack of local accountability because we haven't had elections? Well, I think it's very significant. The reason we would say it's significant is because we were unable to identify very quickly who uh, genuine survivors and victims were. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, there were a lot of phantom lists generated by those who would be local mm -hmm. leaders who were propped up at the last minute by various political parties. So in that sense, identifying survivors very quickly and targeting relief to them uh, was not done in a timely way. Mm. That said, even if we had had local government, mm. the machinery of the yeah. state had become increasingly incapable over the last several years of conflict, mm. Mm. such that the Nepali state was caught napping mm. at its most incapable uh, mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel that the immediate aftermath of the earthquake was very poorly managed. Mm -hmm. What we call crisis uh, leadership mm -hmm. uh, uh, management was very mm -hmm. poor. And we feel that um, in a place like Nepal, if future events were to uh, so require, we should focus on the most vulnerable uh, from the government point of view, rather than all of them. The example is, you know, 745,000 mm. households were affected. Why would you, as an incapable state, go after all 745? You would leave that to others. You would look at the 82,000 or so households that continue to languish mm. in temporary housing yeah. two years after yeah. the event. Mm -hmm. You said the government was caught napping. I think um, let's hope that both at the national level and the local level we wake up. Thank you very much, George. Thank you.